G'day guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be testing out the MLM2 Pro with E6 Connect. I'm really excited for this because so far, the MLM2 Pro has been a unit where you can essentially do full shots with it, and it's absolutely fantastic for bag mapping um, and also doing full shot practice. But what the MLM2 Pro lacks with is simulated golf. The best simulated golf right now with this unit comes with the Awesome Golf app. And also the best practice realistically comes from the Awesome Golf app. The Awesome Golf app has the best ranges, it has the information displayed in the best way, and it also has the best simulated golf courses. Now, it only has four courses, so it is quite limited with the courses it has. However, those four nine-hole courses are absolutely fantastic. You get accurate ball flights, spin axis is there, and they are really fun. The best thing about the Awesome Golf app is the physics. On those nine-hole courses, the physics of the actual ball are true to what you would see in real life. Okay, so that being said, we're gonna jump in, we're gonna play E6 for the first time using the MLM2 Pro. I'm really excited for this. So I have got my Rap Soda hooked up to the app. I'm just gonna step through. So to, to get to E6, you actually go into simulation, third party apps, and you've got E6 Connect. You've also got Awesome Golf. We're gonna click E6 Connect. Um, are you sure you wanna connect to a third party app? Connect. Connection successful. Now we're gonna close out of that app and launch E6 Connect. Now, if you have a Garmin R10 and you have it synced up to E6, you're gonna to need to unbind that license with E6. So I had this issue. You simply go into settings and then go down to info and help. And then you just go simulator binding down the bottom. You click on that simulator binding and it's gonna ask you to unbind, rebind or cancel. You just simply unbind your R10 license and then it'll prompt you to enter the information that you received in your email. In the simulator tab now, we've got Rapsoda MLM2 Pro. To make sure you're using the RPT balls and you've got it configured how you want, simply click on it. You're gonna get handedness, are you a right or left-handed golfer, mode, we're hitting into the net, and then the ball, Rapsoda ball this is gonna give us accurate spin axis. All right, so let's go back. That's everything in, um, in the settings I wanted to show. You do have uh, golf settings, so you can set all of your um, different settings in the games, whether you want mulligans or you know the environment. Uh, green speed, let's go, let's bump up the green speed to 12. Um, then from there, going back to the home page, you're gonna have play golf, games, events, and resume. With the R10 license, you did have access to practice, which had multiple driving ranges. It was actually really good for practice. It looks like with the MLM2 Pro license, we're not getting that, which is a real shame because I did use that section a lot, and the ranges you got were actually really good. So it's a shame that we don't have access to those practice facilities. I'm hoping that that's a mistake with the license. It just seems odd that we're not getting those practice facilities. So let's jump in to, let's just look at games first. So when you actually sign in for the first time, you're gonna to have to enter your login information. And the reason you wanna do this versus just use a guest player is because any round you have or anything you play, it's all gonna be logged on the E6 server. And then to access all your stats post round, you actually go online to the E6 online portal, which is a web page, and it's gonna have all your stats um, for, for the round of golf, and, and it's really good. You can really delve into the stats and see trends in your game. So I am gonna log in. It looks like I've had a disconnect on the MLM2 Pro, but I'll, I'll worry about that later. I'm gonna log in. Okay, and now I am logged in. Another thing you wanna do is, I believe the license is tied to the launch monitor, However, I wasn't sure, so I just created a new email and uh, a, a totally new profile because if I ever do end up selling this thing, I wanna make sure that I can just hand off the email and hand off the E6 free courses because someone buying this secondhand, they're gonna want access to these free courses. This is a big, big plus um, for getting this unit. All right, so let's join. If you want to save that profile, so then, every time you log in E6, your profile's there ready to go. 
and you don't wanna to have to enter in your email and password every single time, click on the little settings icon and go to security down the bottom there. So you've got profile preferences, HUD and security. You wanna go security and then stay logged in. Um, it's gonna warn you, uh, you know, this will keep the player signed in, blah, blah, blah. Click okay and then accept. And now every time you go onto the E6 Golf app, your profile is gonna be saved and you can just simply uh, click on your name and push join and you don't have to enter in your password and email. Right, let's go next. So within the games, you get closest to the pin, long drive and long drive world series. I can delve into all of these quickly. Let's go closest to the pin. We'll click the belfry and we'll go tee off. What you're gonna get is a par three. Um, you're gonna have three attempts closest to the pin. So let's get out of that. Instead of going main menu, I can just go new course and that'll take me um, back to this menu. Long drive, so let's go have a look at long drive. We'll go to Belfry. Um, again, it looks like you're gonna get three attempts at a long drive. These are games where you would definitely have a guest and have someone else playing with you. Like if you have a friend over, you wanna do a long drive. All right, let's uh, exit that round. We'll go to new course and we'll go long drive world series. So let's check this out. And this one looks like it's taking a while to load. I'm hoping it's just because it's the first time I've loaded it. Okay, and that's interesting. It's just booted me back to the home page. So I will try that one more time. We'll go next, long drive world series. Basically what you're gonna get is a grid. You get a world uh, long drive grid that you see on TV. Okay, so for whatever reason, um, it's not letting me go into the world long drive grid. Um, like I said, if you look at the top left there, that picture of the long drive range, it's essentially a Vegas long drive grid. It does work. Um, I don't know why it's not working on this at the moment. Uh, potentially it's because the MLM2 Pro's dropped connection. So let me just go back. I'll just hit connect again. Okay, so my MLM2 Pro has disconnected from the Rapsodo app. So I'm just gonna connect it again. Okay, we are connected again. Uh, let's go and connect to E6. Connection successful. Right. We should be connected again now. Yep, MLM2 device has connected. Let's just see if this long drive grid works. Okay, so unfortunately, it just keeps booting me. Um, so I'm not able to show you what that word long drive grid looks like. However, let's continue on with the app. It does look like we've had another disconnect from the MLM2 Pro, which is odd. Right, let's go into events real quick. So with the events, these events, they're really good because you get access to the Virtual Golf Association. The issue is because we only have the five free courses, you need to play an event that is actually hosted at one of the courses that we have. So as you can see um, for this, I think they're monthly events potentially, maybe they're weekly events. All of these events are at New South Wales Golf Club, which we don't have. So therefore we can't play in the events. If these events were hosted at one of the courses that we have access to, then we would be able to play in them. Um, but as you can see, all of these events are at New South Wales Golf Club, which we don't have access to, unfortunately. But so these events are realistically for the people who upgrade the E6 license and get access to those courses. So the only other tiles we have access to now are Play Golf and Resume. In Play Golf, you can play nine holes, exit the round, when you load the app up again, you can simply push resume and it'll take you back to the 10th hole and you can continue your round. So that's what the resume button does. Let's jump into play golf. So in the play golf section, because we're using the free trial or the five free courses that we get for life, which is really good, you only have access to stroke play. If you wanna play match play, stable foot, all those other events, you do need to upgrade your license. So let's jump into stroke play. The courses we have access to, Aviara Golf Club, The Belfry, Sanctuary Golf Course, Stone Canyon Golf Club, and Wade Hampton Golf Course. It's a real shame. I do love that we get access to The Belfry, but my favorite course out of the five with the R10 was Bandon Dunes. I love that course. It was a Lynx course. It was 
great fun. Unfortunately, we don't have Band and Dunes with this free trial now. Instead, we have the Belfry, which, to be honest, is a pretty famous course. It's got some famous holes. They've hosted multiple Ryder Cups at this course. There's been some amazing golf played here. So you can't be mad. The Belfry is an amazing course. But these five free courses, if I'm not mistaken, are the same five free courses you get with the Mevo Plus. But all these courses, they are good fun to play. And they are different in their own unique way. Okay, so let's try and get this connection issue sorted. So every time I've launched into E6, I keep having disconnects. So I'll try get connected again, and then we'll try jump in and play a few holes at the Belfry. Okay, we are connected again, so let's start a session. And just real quick, I was really hoping that the disconnect issues were fixed or solved by all these updates. I have got everything up to date. I'm on version 3.0.0 on the Rapsodo. I've updated the app and I've also updated E6 and I'm still having disconnect issues. Again, th that's something that I feel should have already been fixed. It should already have been solved. And I don't know why myself and a lot of users are having disconnect issues still. On a totally unrelated note, I will do a video over the 3.0.0 update on the Rapsodo in a separate video. And we'll go down to the Belfry next. Now we can select holes we want to play. So I will do that. I'll play the fourth. I'll play the tenth. The tenth is a very, very famous hole. We'll play the... 12th, little par three, and we'll play the 18th. And we'll move those holes up and we'll say tee off. Okay, welcome out to the Belfry. And this is really cool because I've never played this course on E6. You're gonna get a flyover, we'll skip through that. Okay, and it says ready to swing. All right, as always, no warm ups allowed. So we're gonna get into this. Um, we will hopefully warm up as the round goes on. Lovely. Okay, and that was very straight for a ball flight. I felt like that should have been a little draw. Let's have a look at the metrics. Okay, so looking at that, let's just pull that back up. So to pull it back up, you click the E6 icon and then you go to analyzer. So that shot there, all the metrics look pretty good. Uh, like I said, I am. that's my first swing of the day, so I'm, I'm warming up. But looking at that spin axis, we've had negative 1.7 for a spin axis, which is going to be a draw. Looking at the ball flight, it looked dead straight. So the launch direction was 0.3 to the right, which it did do. If you look at the, the dotted line versus the, the actual ball flight, which is the red line, it did start right. However, the spin axis, negative 1.7, I'm not seeing a draw. I don't know. I'll have to do more testing, but it doesn't look like we're getting spin axis in game. All right, let's hit, oh, there is water up by this green. How far is it to carry at 270? I don't think so. Not Having not warmed up, I'm not game enough to try and go for this green. So I'm just gonna lay up. I'm gonna hit a five iron. I am using the RPT balls. So we should be seeing an accurate spin axis. What I might try and do is I'll try and hit a little draw and see if we can get the ball moving uh, right to left. Okay, that was definitely hooking. And it's gone dead straight. That was definitely hooking big time. That should have started pretty straight, a little bit right and hooked. So again, we're seeing, we'll pull that up again. So we're seeing a, a right launch direction, a negative 2.4 spin axis. So it's, it, it is a draw, the ball should be moving left and we're not seeing that in the ball flight. It's taken off right and gone dead straight. So that's not good. Um, the whole selling point of the Rapsodo is accurate ball flights indoors. It, it reads spin axis. That's its big thing. It reads spin axis using the RPT golf balls. It's not actually, well, it doesn't look like it's using that in game. It's saying it in the data tile, but the actual ball flight is going dead straight, which is very odd. Okay, let's hit a wedge into this green. We've got 97 yards. 
So I'm just going to hit a lob wedge. Oh, that was a great shot. We'll take that. Again, that felt like a draw to me. Yeah, it was. See, that's odd. So looking at that, that had a negative seven spin axis, but it was going dead straight um, looking at the ball flight. So I don't think it's actually using the spin axis metric in game, which is just odd because it's reporting spin axis, but then it's not using it for the ball flight. All right, let's play the 10th hole. So this hole, very, very famous hole. It's a reachable par four. Uh, it's about 260 to the green, so I should be able to do that. I mean, if I was warmed up, this would probably be a three wood. Okay, let's have a look at that. Again, dead straight, which to me, that felt like a draw. Uh, my natural ball flight is a draw. No, that was a fade. Okay, so that was that said it faded. But it looks like it just went dead straight again. Let's have a look at the analyzer. So that's taking off right, and it looks to me like it's just going dead straight. The one thing I will say, launch angle. One of the things that they said was fixed in the E6 app was launch angle or vertical launch angle. And I have to say, it is correct. I'm, I'm finally happy to say that with the Rap Soto, I've said from day one, the vertical launch angle with driver is was wrong. It was too low. It was reporting at about 10 degrees launch, which for me, that's just not right. I launched my driver around 14, and that's exactly what we're seeing now with the Rap Soto using E6. Launch angle is 13.2 degrees, which is absolutely correct. So I'm really happy to see they've fixed the vertical launch angle. I'm just not happy with the uh, the shot shape because that's the whole selling point of the Rap Soto. I mean, right now you could say using E6, you're gonna get a more accurate ball flight from the R10. And I don't know why I'm using RPT balls because the ball's just going dead straight. Let's see how chipping is. So this is good. I'm, I'm glad I missed the green because now I can test out chipping within E6. I'm gonna try and just do a 10 foot chip and that's 10 feet in my room because that's where the Rap Soto really seems to struggle is on those short chip shots. So if this does register, it'll come up short, but I'm just gonna try and see if it registers the short little 10 foot chip shots. Okay, that was 10 feet exactly. And it hasn't registered. It looks like these short chip shots, um, again, just aren't being picked up by the Rap Soto. That was 10 feet again. And yeah, it just doesn't like it. So chipping still needs a bit of work. It's not even giving indications of you know, potentially getting a read. It's just a solid green light. So it hasn't even registered uh, the swing. We'll do one more 10 foot chip. That's a little bit further, maybe 11 feet, and it hasn't registered it. And this is why I say chipping needs to be better because if you wanna play simulated golf with this unit, it has to pick up those short chip shots because if it doesn't, it's just gonna get really frustrating, especially if you're trying to play a tournament round or you're trying to play against someone, you're gonna to come to a point like this. I mean, it's not even a short chip shot. Oh, we've had a disconnect. This chip shot is 33 feet. You've got plenty of room. It shouldn't struggle this much on short chip shots. It's got the cameras, it's got the radar. It should be able to pick up short chip shots because you're gonna short side yourself and then you're gonna to have to hit it about 10 yards past the pin which is then going to give you a bogey or a double bogey instead of getting up and down. So they need to work out short chip shots. Okay, we have had a disconnect. So let's try and get this connected. Um, and then hopefully I can finish off this round. Okay, so it did actually drop the connection uh, with the Rapsodo itself within the Rapsodo Golf app. So I'm hoping I can just go simulation, third party apps, E6 connect. I'm hoping I can just jump straight back into my round. Let's see. 
So I think it, okay, it says connected. And it still says error there on the screen. Check device connection. So it should be connected now. We might have to exit out of this round. And this will give me a good opportunity to show the resume function. So let's go resume. And it still says error, check the device connection. I've now got a flashing blue light, so it doesn't look like it wants to connect. Let's just go back into the Rapsodo app, E6 connect. And this way of connecting these third-party apps, it just doesn't seem like it's very user-friendly. It's not seamless, it's not easy. With the Garmin, you connect it up to the Garmin Golf app, you don't have to push connect, you just open the app you want to play, and it just works. It's always just worked. I've never had connection issues like this with the Garmin. Okay, connecting app. It doesn't look like it's going to do that, and to me this just looks like it's frozen now. Let's just jump out of this. So it is still connected. I've just checked. It is still connected. Okay, there we go. Connection successful. It still says error. So we'll try and exit out of this round again. I'll resume the round. Okay, I've resumed the round. And it just doesn't look like it's working. I've got a blue light where it should be green. So yeah, it's just not gonna work. What I'll try and do is I'll try and start a new round. Let's go exit, play golf, stroke play, the bell free. Right, I'll go 10, 14, and we'll try and just play these two holes. Back to the 10th tee, and it's not connecting. All right, so it looks like there's a lot of connection issues still. What I'll do, I'll try one more time to get this working, and if it doesn't work, we'll just call it a day. Okay, so what I've done is I've completely disconnected my MLM2 Pro, I've reconnected it to the Rapsodo app, I've connected it to E6, and I'm just gonna go try and play the 10th and the 14th. And it says, error, check device connection. All right, so unfortunately, that's gonna be it for today. It doesn't seem like it wants to connect or the connection process is not user-friendly. It's not easy and it's not seamless. So wrapping this whole video up, initial impressions with E6 and the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. It is fantastic that we're getting the five free courses. I'm not sure why we're not getting practice facilities because like I said, with the R10, I did have practice facilities and they were fantastic and I did use them quite a lot. Next, let's talk about the connection issues. That's the biggest thing. The way that you use third-party apps on the Rapsodo, it just doesn't seem like it's gonna work, to be honest. Nothing is seamless. And I've had about six disconnects just doing this video. I got to play one hole and then I teed off the next hole and had a disconnect. It's gotten to a point now where Rapsodo are gonna really have to fix this disconnect issue. It's just getting a bit ridiculous. We've had, I believe, three or four major updates since they've released this unit, and we're still having big disconnect issues. This shouldn't be happening. I feel like as a community, we've given them a lot of benefit of the doubt, and it's a new product. We want this thing to be great, but it's gotten to the point now where it's getting a bit ridiculous. We shouldn't be having this many connection issues. Next, let's talk about the data in game. So the two holes or one and a half holes that I did get to play, we're not seeing spin axis. There's, there's no point in playing E6 if you're not gonna get true shot shape. I mean, that's the whole selling point of the Rapsodo is its ability to read spin axis indoors. When you play E6, you get the data there in the data tile, but the, the ball just goes dead straight. So in my opinion, there's no point in even playing E6 because it's just gonna take the launch direction, the horizontal launch direction, and then just go dead straight, which is just negative training. There's It's negative practice. So overall, first impressions, 
of the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro and the E6 integration, I'm going to have to be brutally honest and just say it's not good. It is nowhere near good. The chipping's not there. You're not even seeing accurate ball flight. Like I said, you're going to get better, more accurate ball flight using the Garmin R10, which uses an algorithm. And on that bombshell, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.